So it came to my attention the other day that I haven't actually built something or made something on the channel for a long, long time. I think the last thing I'd done was the Death Scooter, where I converted a petrol scooter into battery power. And before that, I also converted a petrol lawnmower into a battery lawnmower and other build projects. So I thought, you know what? Let's build something. Let's convert something that's petrol into battery. And then I suddenly thought, I haven't actually done anything where I've converted to Milwaukee battery power. And I thought that deserves to be on the channel. So here we go. Let's check out what I'm going to convert. All right, I said I was going to convert something to petrol to battery, but I've changed my mind. I've got this Minimix 150. Yes, a Bell Minimix 150 with a 110 mains motor on it. So it's electric. I know it's electric, okay? So I'm going to convert electric into electric. Well, instead of mains electric, I'm going to convert it to battery. So let's get it in the workshop, take it apart, see what we need to do to it, and see if I can get it working on battery. And then if I do, I'll clear it all up and make it amazing. Remember, this is going to be Milwaukee powered. So should we keep it orange or should we do something else with it? Nice. It's competition time. And if you would like to win a Machinery Nation and Oregon collaboration t-shirt, just drop a comment below this video for your chance to win. We'll let the winner know in a couple weeks time in our community tab. Good luck. <laughs> Whoa, skids are ready. Right, we've got to take off the cover and take off the electric motor to find out what we've got inside. And it's a bit wet. It's been outside for like 18 months. You've probably seen it in the background of other videos all this time. But anyway, a battery powered cement mixer. How cool is that? Right, time lapse, let's strip it down. Won't be needing this no more. Oh no, snippity snip. <laughs> I found the capacitor. Oh, I wonder if we can reuse that switch. It's amazing how dry it is in here. It's well dry. Everything is really, really dry. Kudos to these covers. So, got a switch and a capacitor. Ooh! So you've got the main motor up here. So that's the motor which comes out the side here, drives onto that pulley, goes down to that pulley and powers this gearbox, which then goes onto the drum to turn the drum. So we're going to be keeping all of that. And theoretically, we've just got to replace the electric motor with a battery DC motor rather than AC motor, and then put all the gubbins in that side. I think that's how simple it should be, but we'll find out. I'll reuse this belt, wind it off the side, and then hopefully, it's the trouble with tooth belts, they always sort of tend to want to stay on there. Get one bit off, and then, there we go. That's all that drives it, a little tiny belt. Like that, you spin, the, spin that around so easy. Look how easy that turns, eh? Mad. One, two, three, four. Woo! Haha! <laughs> That's my motor! Theoretically, that is everything removed. We just need to take the motor out of there and all the switching and everything and get it so it's an open case. And if by magic, I've got a motor. This motor's from Viva. It's not exactly the right motor, but I bought two when I'd done the death scooter. So this is what powered the death scooter. And it's like 3000 watt motor. I don't think we need a 3000 watt motor to run this. Right, so let's see if this fits in there and um, change the sprocket for a pulley so it can power that. <gasps> oh, oh, it fits in the hole. <laughs> Surely it's not going to be that easy, I guarantee. There's more stuff I'm going to need to do. But that motor fits in there, that's good news. How about that? Right, so I need to get this pulley off of here so we can reuse it. You haven't got any advice on how to take these off easily. Yeah, it does. Yes, yes. Look at that. Winner. Right, scrap. Right, so now I need to fit that pulley on to the shaft of this motor instead. Because the problem I've got is that that pulley is a lot bigger than that shaft. So I need to make up a spacer in between. But the problem is I don't have a mill, so it's not that easy. But I'll work it out, it's fine. Just weld something on there, push it on there, and as long as it's tight, it'll be fine. That's, that's just fine for me, all right? Right, I'm gonna make up a shaft and then try and fix that motor into there so that that can then go onto there. All right, bit of a build montage.
Right, good news. The motor mount works absolutely fine. I was told to actually properly, should we say, mount the motor in the casing, but it's, it's held in with one bolt for now, absolutely fine. But really pleased with how I've done that pulley on there. Problem is, the cement mixer goes anti-clockwise and that motor is gonna make it go clockwise and I've put a right-handed thread on it rather than left-hand thread, so it could wind itself off. So I put a bolt up through the middle as well to lock that in place. So fingers crossed that'll be fine. Right, it's now time to do some electrics, which I'm well excited about. I love the electric side of it. 30 volts to 48 volts rated, which you're gonna say, James, 18 volt batteries on Milwaukee. I know, okay, right, problem there. No, nope, I'm gonna make it 36 volts. So I'm gonna double up the batteries. So we've got two 12 amp hour batteries on here, running 24 amps at once. Woo, exciting, well good. But say, e-bike controller, that should be absolutely fine to run this. I'll be honest, most people look at that and it scares the crap out of them, which I understand because there's so many wires. You think, what does that do? And the instructions are normally in Chinese. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So, just to sort of put a bit of clarity on this, it's extremely simple. You can forget most of it. You've got this on a haul motor, you'll have these nine cables, and this is the first time, being honest now, that this has ever happened to me, where that cable actually just clips right in. I've never had that. I've always had to join these wires up. So you'll have five of these wires to join up to five of those wires, and those colors will be color coordinated. And then you've got the big wires, and that's all you need. The red and the black is positive and negative on your battery, and then you've got three to your motor, up to here, look. So you just gotta work out which ones of those go onto which. I'm presuming blue to blue, yellow to yellow, and green to green. I could guess, that isn't always correct, but it's a good way of looking at it. All of these work on your like speed controller, on and off switches, position feedback to like a controller, to like a speedometer, changing four to reverse. There's lots of different ones on that do lots of different things, but you haven't got to worry about that. That's your simple stuff there. From that, you could just easily hook up just everything you need. Very, very simple. Right, exciting news, and I'm not talking about my new trim. Oh no, I've got this working. Well, I think I have. It's all wired in, and I made the motor spin, so I hope now I'm gonna be able to share with you that spinning, because this is what it's all about. Right, James, come on, make this work. Right, positive that side, negative that side. So I've made my Milwaukee battery a 36 volt system. Oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Don't try this at home. Ready? On it goes. I've got a spinning gear at the top there. So the motor is going round on this system using the motor controller. I haven't got the speed controller fitted yet, but now it's time. Oh yes it is. To put this together properly, smarten her up, make it look like she deserves a bit of a birthday treat, and then we get to test it. Right. Let me put my thinking cap on and um, get this sorted. So here she is, she's all done. And I've even painted it red and black. Why? Because, well, I love red and black for one, and two, we're powered by Milwaukee, so surely that makes sense. So apologies, Belle, for not painting it orange. I wish I did, but I, I just had to. It is now red and black, and it's all done. And to be quite honest, there is very little difference about it than the, what there was originally. I've kept as much the same as possible. All right, so I've also rejuvenated the stand. So we've now got the proper stand on the top so you can tip the cement out into a wheelbarrow once you're done. Awesome, couldn't be without that. But my, my paintwork, it is, it's basic, okay? It's no Picasso painting. I've just literally pressure washed it all off, banged off all of the cement that was on it, and given it a quick wire brush, and then just blasted some paint over the top, so primer and then the top paint. So it, it looks great, I'm really happy with how it's come out. But it's only a cement mixer, it's gonna get dirty, it's gonna get full of cement. Right, battery time. Now as you can see here, I've got the Milwaukee battery holders. Now I was gonna 3D print them, but I thought, you know what, they're about 10 quid online, I just bought them and installed them. So now, you can put one battery in there, and one battery in there, and you've now got a 36 volt system. Yes, because 18 plus 18 is 36. It's running a more powerful system because I feel you're gonna need it to turn that drum. All right, so as the battery's plugged in, we're ready to go. Will that drum turn? Press the button, here we go. And now she is turning, look at that, ah, amazing. And because it's still the same gearbox, everything's running the same, so you can push down on that and nothing's happening. So I think it's gonna be absolutely fine to power full of cement. So look at it, I'm well happy. And if memory serves me correctly, it sounds exactly as a normal electric one does. There's no different sound. Never been the nicest sound in the world, but it's better than the petrol engine pumping away all day, going ba 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 ba. And off is just done. Quiet silence. No pulling on ropes. No having to run an extension lead. Right. Let's go and fill this full of you know the required amount to see if it will do it loaded. Right. So I don't have any cement I need to mix today. So we're going to use the gravel from the driveway to fill it up to see how well it turns. Let's turn it on and fill it up with gravel, because we'll soon need to use this for cement, and we'll probably have that on our vlog channel, which is MN Vlog, so make sure you subscribe to that, because that's well exciting. We just love doing stuff on there where we make stuff 
play about the stuff, do logs, this sort of stuff, and sort of other projects. So yeah, make sure you check that out. But today I'm just gonna load it with gravel and see how it gets on. There she is. She's a going. So she keeps turning. One. Two. Sixteen. Seventeen so far. She's still turning. Everything looks good. Plus 20 scoops, so that's like four to one, four times, right? So, yeah, I think that's probably about right where you go, but let's go a bit more. That's like 25 scoops now. She's a turning. There's 20 scoops of gravel. It's coming just about to the edge there. If that was cement, then that would be coming out of the edge there because it'd be runny and watery. I'm well impressed. I've probably been mixing for like five, six minutes now, which would probably be about what you do for a normal mix of cement. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that's what I do, as long as it looks like it's right. Oh, well proud, well pleased. Nothing's getting hot or anything back there. The batteries are nice and cool, everything's good. Well happy. Right, let's tip it out. Let's tip it out while it's still going around. There's still battery power, there's no lead, there's no cheating. Woo! Nice. As you would into a wheelbarrow, look. Hopefully it's cleaned my drum a bit as well. I didn't paint the inside of the drum, what's the point in doing that? Look at that, see, it was mixing all of that, which is a good wheelbarrow full. Without a shadow of a doubt, probably, probably what, 50, 60 kilos of gravel. She's still going. The last bit out, as you would, give it a shake. It's still going around. And turn her off. So I've converted a Bell cement mixer, which is the most popular, best cement mixer on the market, hands down. There's nothing better. I don't care what anyone says, I love Bell cement mixers and recommend anyone to buy one. If you already use cement mixers, you know exactly what I mean. But I've converted it to Milwaukee Power one of the most popular power tool brands in the country. So the most popular mixer and the most popular battery platform. I love it, I love the combination. Do I advise you doing this at home? Mm, probably not, because Bell make an amazing battery powered cement mixer already. So I wouldn't want to upset them. So definitely check their battery powered cement mixer out, which I found out about the other day. Didn't know they'd done one. I thought I was going to be the first. Damn them, damn. But no, check out Bell's website. This isn't sponsored by the way. I just love their cement mixers. They haven't told me to say that. They don't even know I'm doing this. And nor do Milwaukee. So yeah, I'll deal with the consequences in a minute. It's been a well good fun project. It's turned out amazingly well, well happy. A Milwaukee powered Bell cement mixer. Who knew? We're Machinery Nation and we bring you videos every Tuesday and Friday all about tools and machinery. So please consider subscribing, hit the like button, ding the notification bell, and we'll bring you more projects, more stuff about tools and machinery. So we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio!